We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. We have given them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey across East Africa and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shepap Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepap. We are in Olorien in Kajedo County. It's very windy here. We are about to meet two farmers who could do with a shepherd. Yes, so let's go meet them. Emmanuel and Regan are brothers. They live together with their families on seven acres in Olorien in Kajiado County. They have cattle and chickens and grow a variety of crops. Emmanuel and Regan. Yes, sir. We are very happy to be here. Are you happy to see us? Very happy. Very you happy. love visitors, don't yeah, you? Yeah, we love them. We, can we see, love visitors. We can see the smiles. <laughs> Emmanuel, how long have you lived here? Come on, I'm going to 20 years. Yeah. And how has life been? Maisha, ni hivyo tunapambana pambana. Mhm. Kwa sababu kuna wakati wa kiangazi na kuna wakati wa wakati wa kumenyesha. Aha. Sasa ni hivyo tunapambana pambana. Do you have many cows? Eh, tuko na mingi. During the the dry season, what what do you feed them on? Tunahamisha mbali. Oh, you move with them. Yes. So those are the cows Naomi we saw. Yeah. Parliament Road. The Parliament Road. Yes. Huge jam. Huge traffic. So Regan, what about you? I help my elder brothers mm. in, in, in farming. Right. We keep cows, we keep sheep and goats. Right. Uh, those are the main animals we, we Is keep. Is that what you do? Yeah. You don't go to school or? I have been to school for the last uh, four years mm -hmm. to pursue a diploma in communication. Right. But it's now one year since I left college. Right. So before uh, uh, I get a job, mm -hmm. uh, I have to be at home, assist them uh, in whatever way I can. Wow, yeah. that's good. Now, Emmanuel, we associate masses with cows. Is there anything else you have in the farm except cows? Yes. Right. So what do you grow? My, like maize, yeah. um, maragwe. Yeah. Oh, are they good? Yeah, and you Aha, uh -huh, so there's a problem, so they don't grow well. Yeah. Right. So Regan, tell me, how has the harvest been? For the past few years, harvests have not been so bad. But uh, one year ago or so, rain has not been uh, enough. So you find that when rain falls, it, uh, the rain period comes to an end abruptly and the crops have germinated. So when there is direct uh, uh, severe uh, uh, weather, like hot, they won't grow. And currently, mm -hmm. are they doing well? Currently, no. The last rain we had was so short. Mm -hmm. right. Crops have just germinated, the rain has disappeared, so there is no hope. Apart from having cows, I'm seeing some chickens around. Okay, tell me about chickens. The few chickens you see around are small scale. I haven't heard of anyone who has kept them in big numbers mm -hmm. uh, to earn money from them. The, the chicken you see here are just for, for dinner, for dinner, or for guests like you. Yeah. Yes. Now me will move ah. <laughs> Yes. Another chicken. Another chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd like maybe to be the first case study for chicken. I wouldn't mind. I would like to be the first case study for chicken rearing. Yeah. Now me, who did we come? Now we came with experts. Mm -hmm. Now who are going to look into your problems? Mm -hmm. And like Tony says, there is hope. Uh, we'll be very thankful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We'll have the expert look at your yeah. farm, see what's going wrong with your crops. Yeah. And we'll have a look around and see also what you can do about the chickens. Yeah. To make you maybe a case study, who knows? At yes. the end of the day, who knows now? Yeah, who knows? And a few yeah. other things around the farm yeah. to make sure that your shamba is shaped up. Are you ready? We are very ready. How do you say that in Ma? Kiratayari. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 
there you are. There you yeah. are. Uh, very lovely farm. Very lovely. Very hardworking guy. Yes, yes, yes. What yes. do you want to start with? Well, with seeds. Seeds. Farm seeds. What about you? Uh, I'm thinking of starting with the chickens. There's lots of work with the chickens and I'm getting them an expert to make them better, better chicken farmers. There's a lot of work to do. Mm, so let's get on it. Okay, so, oh. oh! Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey, look where you're oh, going! <laughs> Emmanuel is a traditional Maasai and has cattle. But his younger brother, Regan, a recent graduate, wants to expand into the chicken business. At the moment, they have only a few local chickens. We introduce them to a Kenchik expert to see where they should start. Now, we've walked around with you and you've seen the chicken house. Yeah. What are your general observations? My general observation, not good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I have looked at your house. It's quite small for the birds. Even the drinkers and the feeders can't fit in. The space is not even enough for the birds. So you need oh, actually to have a new structure. A good chicken house allows at least one square foot per bird. It must have good ventilation and be secure from predators. So what about the general hygiene of the chicken place? The general hygiene is poor again, Regan. It's only important uh, to have a foot bath at the entrance of the poultry house to minimize the entry of uh, pathogens in the poultry house. At the same time, it's always important to regularly clean your house to avoid diseases. Your chickens need a clean place to live in. That means no rubbish. Now, Regan, whose shoes are those? I think these shoes have fallen onto this house by mistake. It's by mistake. They're not supposed to be there. They're not they supposed to be there. there by <laughs> some younger boys. I know the chickens were wearing shoes. Yeah, no, they, are, they don't. Huh? At the moment, Emmanuel and Regan have no improved chickens. Where can a farmer get these can grow chicks? Uh, you get it from our agents who are all over the country and they also have depots close to every county. So if you need the day old chicks, you can contact us. We have a website where you can reach us. If you don't have a website, you can always uh, call us. But we have agents in every town good, good. in Kenya. I think right now, it's good if you show us where to build the new chicken house. Emmanuel and Regan will soon get 100 Canberra chicks. They will definitely need a new house. So let's get to work. Before the farmers get their new chicks, they should know how and what to feed them. Regan has been feeding his chickens whatever he gets from the farm. An expert from Unga came to give him some advice. Mr. Kwake, the farmers here are about to receive some chicks. What should they feed them on and how should they feed the chicks? I advise the farmers uh, to start with Fugo Chick Duckling Mart uh, for eight weeks, which are quality formulated with high standards and uh, provide proper nutrition for faster growth of their chicks. Canberra chicks are dual purpose and if you want to sell them for meat, you can do so after 18 weeks. Otherwise, you can use them as layers. Layers need a special feed called Fugo Layers Mash. You can supplement the Layers Mash with Kienyeji feed like crushed maize. Use half layers mash and half locally available feed. How about water? Water is very important for birds. Actually, they are supposed to provide fresh, clean water which they can consume themselves. You will need one drinker and one feeder for every 50 chickens. The feeders and drinkers which are placed at the poultry house are supposed to be cleaned on a daily basis. Okay. Mm. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Kwake. <coughs> While Tony was looking into expanding Emmanuel and Regan's chicken business, I had a look at their crops. The family has planted beans, maize, and onions, but I'm sure they could do better. So I asked expert Jane from Agra for help. Oh, so Jane, you've had a look around this beautiful farm. What did you think? 
I've seen the farm for Emmanuel. I see it's very good lad, fertile, uh, good soil. Mm -hmm. So what kind of seeds did you use or where do you buy your seeds? Oh, that's not good. You should not buy seed from the market. For seed, you need very high quality seed. And uh, for me as an expert in agriculture, I work with Angra and the seed is developed by some approved seed companies and it is also regulated by CAFIS. A farmer should always buy seeds with a CAFIS label. It is well treated with chemicals, it will germinate well, it will grow well, you will get good value for your money. So what I have done today is to come with some seed for you. Uh, this is maize seed. It is very good seed for this area. It is disease resistant. It grows well and it grows very fast. It is developed for this area. So Jane, in terms of spacing, mm -hmm. is that good spacing? What I would like to tell Regan is that you need to pay a lot of attention to the spacing. For maize, you need to plant your maize at a spacing of 75 centimeters between the rows. When I look at your rows in the farm, you have planted one and a half meters apart. That one is also not good. For maize, plant two seeds, one foot or 30 centimeters apart. Remember, the rows should be 75 centimeters apart. If you get your spacing wrong, you will lose a lot of your crop. And if you don't have a foot to measure, you can always use your foot. You can uh, step on your foot, one seed there, and they do like that, put another one like that. Spacing is crucial, and each crop may require different spacing. I also have uh, bean seed. I brought this seed for you also. It is Katumani bean nine, and you can see it's very good bean. You can try it, and you can also plant it for your area. For beans, one seed should be planted every 10 centimeters with 45 centimeters or one and a half feet between the rows. Have a meter between the rows and you can just do your hand like that so that every, every time you move your hand, you are putting one seed of bean. So spacing is very, very important because you want to get enough profit from your farm. So Regan, do you have any questions? Yeah, I have a question. In case I want to know uh, where can I get information on, on the type of seedlings that are appropriate for my farm or for my area? Where can I get that kind of information? To get information on what crop variety or what variety of maize or beans you can plant in your area, you need to send a message to CAFES, an SMS message, I know you have a phone, and you type the crop, in this case it's maize, maize and then you put a hash and then the name of your division. The name of your division here is Olerien. So you would type maize hash Olerien, send the message to 20354. A message will come back telling you these are the varieties you need to plant in your area. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to an, any agro dealer, look for them, and you plant them for your area. Thank you, Thank you so much. It's so hot! I'm so tired. Yeah, what have you been up to? Oh, we've been learning about certified seeds. What about you? Oh, busy, busy, <sighs> building a new chicken house. We want to turn the brothers into chicken farmers. Yeah, they'll be good farmers, they I bet. They'll be great farmers. They're yeah. very hardworking. Yeah, I need a break. I need a break too. <sighs> and there'll be more right after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We are still in Olerien in Kajedo County. Now, me, now, me, now, me. Oh, which one came first, the chicken or the egg? The egg. I think it was a chicken. No, it was the egg. It was a chicken because if you get No, the it egg, must look. Then you no, the listen, chicken. I have to go and look into the water problem. I'll see you later. I'm having an egg here and I'm having a chicken. I think I better look into this. I'll leave Tony to think about chicken and eggs and go have a look at Emmanuel and Regan's water situation. The families use the river for water, which is two kilometers away. In a dry area like this, 
they should also be harvesting as much rainwater as possible using gutters and a storage tank. They do have an old guttering system, but it's in a bad shape. I think this is a job for Caris. Rainwater is free and it's a good clean source of water for the shamba, the animals and of course the family. For every square meter of roof, you can cut three liters of water every time it rains. I couldn't stop thinking about chickens and eggs and chicks, which comes first. The Kenchik expert invited me to visit their hatchery, the biggest and the most modern in East Africa. In the morning, trucks deliver 120,000 fertilized eggs. The trucks are washed and disinfected and security seals are checked. The eggs are offloaded, flock by flock all from three registered Kenchik breeder farms. The temperature is measured. If an egg gets too warm, the chick will die before it is hatched. The eggs are transferred into a cold room where they are separated into good and bad eggs. Eggs that are dirty, cracked, too small or too large are all removed. The good eggs are put in setter trays. This will go into the setter incubator for 18 days. A computer controls the climate in the room. It also turns the eggs from side to side every hour. 18 days later, they are transferred into hatching machines or hatchers. This is for the last three days. On day 21, the chicks hatch on their own. Now the real work begins. The chicks are sorted. Healthy chicks are boxed and unhealthy ones removed. The healthy chicks then get vaccinated against maliks if they are layered and boxed. Each box comes with instructions about what other vaccinations your chicks might need and a vitamin packet to add to the first water your chicks drink. All the chicks are sold by distributors, so we can't buy chicks from this factory. Let's go and see a distributor. While Tony was away, I showed Emmanuel and Regan their new improved guttering system. Caris did a fantastic job. The farmers and their families can now harvest more rainwater for their crops, their animals, and themselves. We bought 100 Canberra chicks from the local distributor. Let's bring them to the farm. Cariz and his team have finished the chicken house. We put the Canberra chicks inside the brooder. And now the farmers are ready to start their chicken business. So 
I think we start right now, okay? Yeah. Let's go do it! <laughs> wow, that's quite a list. Emmanuel and Reagan use a battery to power their TV, which is good because they can watch Shamba Shepherd. They also have one solar panel that they use to charge their phones. But light is still a problem. I introduce them to an expert who has a solution. So Emmanuel and Reagan, it's very good to see that you have installed solar panels to use solar energy. So you use it for charging the phone and the TV. Yeah. That's very good. So everyone uses the same charger, everyone. Yeah, so you uh, charger more So you all line up. Yeah, line up. Ah, <laughs> I see. <laughs> no, okay. no, Emmanuel will be at night. Mm -hmm. It can be quite dark and you want to check on your cows and your chickens and maybe your goats. What do you use? Not me, a torch. Uh -huh. What if you don't have battery? Oh, you go touching, touching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. then you guess what? That's a chicken. Something like that. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. I'm sure you have a solution to all this. Oh, definitely, I do. So we do have the S300. It comes with uh, mobile charging and also for lighting purposes. So let me show you how it is. So this is the lantern, which has a battery inside. And this is the panel. And this is the octopus cable that you can be able to use to charge your phone with. This has a four meter cable wire. This you can put it in the, on the roof and then you pass this wire through in the house. This one should always be in the house. So you just connect this here. It has an indicator to show you that it, it is charging. Once it is full, it will give you a full glow of green. Then from there in the evening, you can just disconnect that. And then it has four settings of light. So the first one is 100 hours, this is very low. Then this one 16 hours, eight hours and four hours, which mom can be using it in the kitchen. So it is a very good light. And then again for you, Regan, this is very good for charging your mobile phone. You do not have to go and line up in your uncle's house. You just connect there, we could try out. Is it charging? Good. So this way you can be able to minimize issues to do with smoke that will affect your health, that will affect your eyes. We do away with kerosene, so those costs will no longer be there. And actually you can buy more chicken and rear them, right? And uh, it's very weather resistant. Even though it is rained on, you maybe you leave it at the cattle shed, nothing happens to it, it will still light. In case there is a technical problem with the lamps, mm -hmm. who do I take the lamps to, to repair? Our products do have a, a two-year warranty. So once the product is in warranty and maybe there is a manufacturer's fault, you return to the place that you bought it and immediately it is replaced with a new one. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Give them the alarm. Actually, this is theirs. Mm -hmm. So you can actually start charging your mobile phone. Yeah. Right away. Yeah, the there box. you go. There you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so Regan, what do you think about our shape up? I think Shape Up is a heaven sent. It's a blessing. Right. It has come to us at the right time when yes. we need alternative ways of survival. Oh, great. <laughs> That's yes. a good message. Emmanuel, how did you find the Shape Up? Uh, shape Up is uh, uh -huh. uh -huh. Are you uh -huh. happy? Yeah, no problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, Naomi, they are happy. We are also what? We are also uh, happy. Well, it's been another great show. And we'll see you next time. Right here on Shamba, Shamba Shape, Shape Up. Up. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up.